0 moins 1 minute. We're into the final 60 seconds. Give us a chance to say hello to our friends at ISRO in Bengaluru, to our friends at Arabsat, to Inmarsat tonight in London, Hellasat uh, people in Athens and in Larnaca in Cyprus, to the Talis Alenia space teams in Cannes and Toulouse. Hello locally to the Kourou Cinemari and Cayenne sites, to our industrial partners, ISA and Kness, and to all of you following the broadcast on the internet. We hope you are enjoying it. If you're not settled in, pull up a chair and enjoy the launch because we're going to cut away and let you listen to the DDO and he will call out the final seconds. Remember, the cryo arms will open at about minus seven seconds. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage UAP, décollage. In French Guiana with a lot of fire. Nice shot of the birds on the port side as she took off. I don't know if you could see that. The DDO is saying that everything is going smoothly on board as Ariane begins her mission, the seventh for Ariane Space. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Two new satellites for new services for new customers around the globe. The two boosters are providing 90% of our thrust right now, propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher velocity. 774 tons is her mass at liftoff. She's burning five tons of fuel per second, 2.5 tons in each booster, plus the core stage in the middle is burning another 300 kilos of fuel every second. And Ariane 5 now following the program in her onboard computer, which is located on the upper stage. This gives all the orders, including stage separations, which we will la propulsion see. Est nominal, la trajectoire est nominal, tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Propulsion and trajectory normal, says the DDO. We're in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn and in detail, so you can follow Ariane as she heads east across the Atlantic. Right now, the first flight phase. The single first, first stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will each consume 240 tons in just over two minutes, another 20 seconds roughly, for them to burn. They'll be the first to be extinguished. You'll hear that also Tous les from the DDO. Sont We're 15 kilometers from the pad here in, boot in uh, Jupiter, and the sound Separation is coming des deux All right, those are the separation of the two boosters. You saw that. The DDO confirmed it. This is what it looks like up there. There is one on the left-hand side of the vehicle, outside of, uh, out of the camera range. Before the boosters are empty, their push diminishes in the onboard computer, the same one, senses this drop in acceleration and separates them, and they fall 500 kilometers from shore into a protected area. French Guiana was in part, remember, chosen as a base for its opening on the ocean, launches posing no threat to local population. Take a look at the bottom of your screen on the left altitude, on the right our speed. We're over 100 kilometers and we're past two kilometers per second. We're getting close to the separation of the fairing, which will be next up. And there we are, right on time. Separation de la kilometers. Revealing the silver box on the top is Helicet in Marset. Separation is given by two pyrotechnic cords, and there's one half you can see, the other half on the right side, out of uh, camera range. These cords actually remove the fairing by a contained explosion, very small explosion, that pushes the two parts of the fairing apart. We can separate the fairing now. Why? Because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere, and uh, neither friction nor heating, which could disturb the passengers, also we can get rid La of any dead weight. 
the fairing weighs almost two and a half tons, so we don't need it anymore. We let it go. Ariane 5, of course, the heavy lift launch vehicle. The other two members of the family Soyuz lifting middle-sized payloads, two and three tons. And Vega, the light lift vehicle for the missions of one ton. Nominal. Our next film gives you a closer look at one of our upper passenger operators, Helisat 3. Welcome to the Hellasat world, your gateway to satellite services right in the heart of Europe. And lift off of the Lockheed Martin Atlas V rocket carrying the first satellite for the countries of Greece and Cyprus. Hellasat is a premium satellite communications solutions provider founded in 2001 and acquired by Arabsat in 2013. Its powerful orbital position at 39 degrees east makes Hellasat organization an established brand name in a highly competitive satellite environment. With ground facilities located in Greece and Cyprus, Hellasat provides end-to-end -end reliable and supreme quality satellite services in Europe, South Africa and the Middle East. A high-skilled team of satellite network engineers in Greece and Cyprus provide our customers with fully reliable services that meet their communication needs when and wherever is required. Hellasat serves leading DTH operators by delivering content to more than 3 million households while providing cost-effective solutions to enterprises and governments that want to expand connectivity to every location of their network in the coverage areas. Our focus is to provide solutions to our customers through our satellites in Europe, Middle East and South Africa. As of June 2017, the new geostationary satellite Hellasat 3 will offer service continuity and expansion over 39 degrees east until the end of the year 2034. Helasat 3 Masat S is a joint venture between Helasat and Imasat. The Helasat payload will operate 47 KU transponders and 9A K channels covering Europe, Middle East and South Africa. The Helasat 3 Masat S satellite is based on the Spacebus 4000 C4 platform and is one of the largest satellites manufactured by Thales Alenia Space. The launch and operation of Hellasat 3 to be followed by Hellasat 4 in 2018 are proof that Hellasat is becoming year by year a more powerful and competitive satellite organization, providing further flexible, scalable, and efficient Hellasat services to an even greater market across three continents. Greece and Cyprus, from the ancient times, were the crossroads of civilizations and the crossroads of trade between Middle East, Africa, and Europe. Our ambition is to play this role, to be the window of Middle East and Africa to Europe. At Halasat, we believe that leveraging our deep expertise to provide fast, reliable, and cost-effective solutions to our customers is at the core of everything we do. Halasat, growing connections, brighter horizons. The film mentioned Hellasat 4 to be launched next year. That new satellite will be launched also by Arian Space. We should have a launch replay coming up for you. There we are. That's the first one. We may have several shots of the launch vehicle in replay. You can relive those moments as Arian 5 took off from the pad close to eight minutes ago. We have cameras at several of the half dozen observation sites that are stationed at the base and they furnish us with shots from different angles. Here's the second one. We should have more. I think we're going to have a third one. The closest observation site is called Tukong, like the bird. And many of our VIPs are out there tonight. And that's closest to the base, about four kilometers. Wonderful view. We're in the second powered flight phase. Th the single engine core stage is burning now. While you were watching the film, we were also picked up by our first downrange tracking station in Natal over the border in our neighbor, Brazil. A fast mission tonight. Helisat Inmarsat will be on station in just 10 days. Mikeli Franke of Inmarsat this morning told us that last month they launched from Florida and the satellite won't be on station until early August because of the missions different involving electrical orbit raising and such things, but not today. They're going to be right there in a week and a just a few Extinction days. Extinction of the EPC, on command of guidage. 
There you saw the extinction of the separation and, and the separation. And watch the nozzle on the upper stage. There it is, turning right on. These three commands, extinction and separation of the lower stage and ignition of the upper stage, given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. And our onboard camera giving a shot of the lower stage falling back into the Atlantic off the Gulf of Guinea. We are now in the third powered flight phase, the single upper stage engine that'll burn until plus 25 minutes or 16 minutes roughly. Job of the upper stage is to take the satellites to their injection point, position them for separation, and then release them. That's its propulsion role, but it has a second role that comes during its ballistics phase, and we'll get back to that in a while. Our next film, another look at our first passenger, this time on the Inmarsat side. In June 2014, almost exactly three years ago, Inmarsat first announced the creation of an integrated satellite and complementary ground network across Europe, seeking to take advantage of a visionary and unique commercial and technological opportunity created by the European Commission's DG Connect and subsequently supported to the hilt by 28 member state telecoms regulators. This new network, we said, would uniquely combine space-based and ground-based infrastructure to build a seamless integrated network across the whole European Union that would deliver the most advanced aviation passenger Wi-Fi experience anywhere in the world. No network like this has ever been built before. And so the idea of a European Aviation Network, or EAN, was born. What we and our partners have achieved in just 36 months from that date is, frankly, amazing. We've commissioned an S-band payload from our partner, Thales Alenia Space, which is today being launched into an orbital slot over Europe by Ariana Space. And we've constructed and fully tested the satellite ground infrastructure. We've also built a unique strategic partnership with Deutsche Telekom, one of the world's leading integrated telecommunications companies to design, build, and maintain the LTE-based ground network and to be our preferred provider of ISP services across the EAN. Deutsche Telekom continues to make good progress with the build-out of this complementary ground component network covering the highest density airline routes. We signed international airline groups, which includes world-renowned airline brands such as British Airways, Iberia, Aer Lingus, and Vueling as our launch customer for the new service. IAG plans to equip in excess of 300 aircraft with our EAN service and aims to have 90% of its short-haul fleet ready for commercial service by early 2019. And if all that wasn't enough, we've also secured all 28 EU territory mobile satellite service authorizations, plus Norway and Switzerland. And 27 countries have to date provided us with authorizations or in principle approvals for the complementary ground component. To have done all this in just 36 months is a testament to the skill and dedication of multiple teams across Inmarsat and to the strength of our world-class network of partners. So today, with the launch of Inmarsat SEAN, we see the plan for the European Aviation Network achieve another key milestone. The hard work, of course, is far from over. During the coming weeks and months, we will place the satellite into its orbital position before commencing a rigorous series of tests. In parallel, Deutsche Telekom will continue rolling out the complementary ground component across 31 countries in Europe, while our manufacturing partners complete production of the integrated satellite and air-to-ground avionics, which will enable EAN to operate as a fully integrated service. All this effort is focused on turning the concept of the European Aviation Network into the reality of an operational commercial service in the second half of this year. I'll conclude by offering my sincere gratitude to all my colleagues at Inmarsat, our engineering teams, our regulatory teams, our aviation team, and many, many others who have worked tirelessly, not just to deliver a unique service that will transform the experience of airline passengers throughout Europe in the years to come, but to have achieved so much in just three years. 
And finally, I must also offer my thanks to our vital EAN strategic partners, to Deutsche Telekom, Thales Alenia Space, Thales Aviation, Cobham, and of course, today of all days, our trusted launch provider, Ariana Space. Thank you. While you were watching that film, we were picked up by our next downrange tracking station, Ascension Island, tiny island out in the South Atlantic, 10 square kilometers, belongs to the UK. NASA had a station there till 1989. When they closed it, ESA decided to build its own. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground. The launcher sends radar and telemetry back to this network of stations that keep constant watch on the health of her systems. Ascension Island, Natal before it, and others to come. A final film on Helisat Inmarsat for you now with a look at its builder, Thalassalania Space. European airline passengers will soon be able to watch YouTube on the plane or surf the web thanks to the partnership between four parties. The strong ties uh, between ourselves at uh, Thales Alenia Space and in Marsat, Elasat and Arabsat have been instrumental in bringing Marsat S-band, Elasat Sat 3 to fruition. We have developed a powerful and high performance satellite with a unique combination of mobile broadcast and fixed satellite services using Thales Alenia Space Spacebus 4000 platform. In Marsat S-band mission will deliver, as a complement of JX Constellation, in-flight internet to rival what we get on the ground. The Elasat 3 mission will provide advanced telecom services in Europe and Africa. I want to thank everyone involved, all the partners, and Ariane Space. This venture will transform passenger connectivity over Europe and the high-definition broadcast from 39 degrees east. Everyone at Thales Alenia Space joins me in wishing Imarsat, Elasat, Arabsat, and their customers the very best for these exciting missions. A couple of minutes left in the upper stage burn. Cutoff due, remember, at plus 25 minutes. Inmarsat and Helisat sharing what they call the Condo, the condominium satellite. Two independent missions on one satellite doesn't happen every day. So for this mission, we have two satellites, but three customers and three clients for flight number 238. One of them, Inmarsat, the International Maritime Satellite Organization, and this is the ninth satellite. Arian Space is launched for them. It's the very first launched for Helisat. We're going to turn to our second passenger, a first film now on ISRO and GSAT 17. satellites have revolutionized telecommunication and broadcasting services worldwide. Many services today, such as television broadcast, telephony, radio networking, internet, banking communications, rely in varying degrees on these communication outposts in deep space. Starting with the direction provided by the great visionary, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, in the 70s, satellite instructional television experiment was our first twist of television broadcast through a communication satellite. With sight, television entered the home of the common man. It will be our constant endeavor in the years to come to provide the peaceful uses of outer space for the real problems of this nation. What followed was nothing short of a revolution with its series of INSAT and GSAT communication satellites. ISRO strongly ran forward on these lines, serving various needs of our nation. 
while some of the INSAT satellites carry both communication and meteorological payloads. The GSAT series is dedicated to communication services only. GSAT-17 is ISRO's indigenous communication satellite built on its proven I-3K spacecraft bus or platform. It will provide continuity to fixed satellite services in C and extended C-band and mobile satellite services in S-band which were provided earlier by the older INSAT satellites. GSAT-17 is structured around the 3.1 meter carbon fiber reinforced plastic central cylinder which houses the oxidizer and fuel tanks. North and south panels of the structure accommodate the majority of payload and bus system packages. These have embedded heat pipes for efficient thermal management. This 3475 kilogram spacecraft carries payloads in C extended C and S band. It also carries a data relay transponder and search and rescue payload. One lower extended C band transponder will provide connectivity to Antarctica. Two deployable dual gridded reflectors are mounted on the east and west sides of the spacecraft. The earth viewing side contains a short backfire antenna S MSS band prime focal reflector antenna and two microstrip patch array antennas for payload. It also has a global horn and an omni antenna for telemetry tracking and command operations. The spacecraft has deployable solar panels for generating electrical power. These are mounted on the north and south sides of the structure. These panels contain advanced triple junction or ATJ solar cells which have the capacity to generate around 6 kilowatts of electrical power. The two solar array drive assemblies are used for maximizing solar flux on its solar panels by continuously orienting the solar panels towards the sun. The lithium ion batteries will provide essential power to the payload and bus systems during periods of eclipse. Upon its launch, the satellite will be injected into an elliptical geotransfer orbit in which its shortest distance from Earth, called perigee, will be around 250 kilometers and its farthest point from the Earth, called apogee, shall be around 36,000 kilometers. The liquid apogee motor of the satellite will then be fired to raise the perigee of satellite to 36,000 kilometers, which will make its orbit circular and geosynchronous. This is called orbit raising maneuver. The satellite contains approximately 1,925 kilograms of propellant for its orbit raising, as well as for station keeping corrections by its attitude and orbit control system during its lifetime. The creation and assembly of this satellite has been a collective effort of Team ISRO spread across the country. ISRO Satellite Center, Isaac Bangalore, did the configuration design, development of many bus systems, testing and assembly of the spacecraft. Space Application Center, Ahmedabad, realized the communication payload. Many other subsystems like inertial elements, sensors, propulsion, composites, etc. were delivered by IISU, LEOS, LPSC and VSSC respectively. Many industries also produced and supplied different subsystems. Master Control Facility, Hassan, will carry out all the mission operations during expected lifetime. This communication outpost is expected to soar into space aboard Ariane 5 rocket, VA-238 mission from Kourou in French Guiana on 28th of June 2017 at 2059 hours UTC. It will be located in geostationary orbit and is expected to serve the nation 
for 15 years. Less than a minute ago in the upper stage. There is one minute of propulsion of ESCR. All the parameters on board are normal. Some other key players, other dramatis personae, these are the satellite mission directors. They decide if their satellite is ready for launch. They follow the campaign and give the okay for each stage of its preparation. All that going on here at the CSG, Europe Spaceport, the world's only dedicated commercial space base. Ariane Space operating the launcher family here. And Ariane Space having another very busy year here at Europe's spaceport. One reason being that launches at the base are getting closer and closer together. This is thanks to a shorter and shorter time between launches. Less than 15 days between most of the six launches so far this year. Ariane's mission proceeding on schedule. We're coming up on extinction of the upper stage. And you'll see extinction de l'ESCA. DDO has confirmed extinction of the upper stage right on time. So Ariane has hit her maximum speed. You can see on the bottom right, which just disappeared, but it'll come back. 9.3 kilometers per second. You see the speed Début is dropping des already. En vue de by la the time she separates GSAT yes. at uh, 39 minutes, she'll be down to 7.3 kilometers per second. All is functioning normally on board. You're watching Ariane Spaceflight number 238. Take a look now at a film outlining the relationship between Ariane Space and Helisat Inmarsat. Welcome all to the VA-2 satellite launch. In December last year, Inmarsat and Helisat have entrusted Ariane Space with the launch of their Condosat mission, Helisat 3, Inmarsat S EAN, so-called HS3 IS. It has been a real win-win for Imarsat and Elasat to develop this project together. I would like to thank Elasat, Harasat, and Taf for this great journey so far. It was really enriching for me and for Imarsat. I would like to thank all my team for the outstanding job done. Great job, guys. The Imarsat SEIN payload main mission is to deliver communication services in the S band to support Imarsat European Aviation Network that will deliver high-capacity flight broadband for airline passengers across Europe. This is another great example on Imarsat capabilities to develop complex systems for mobile applications. The HS3 IS satellite will be Helasat's second satellite at 39 degrees east, delivering in orbit, direct to home, and telecom services over its coverage areas in Europe, Middle East, and Sub-Sahara African countries. Its activation will not only maintain, but also expand Helasat's business reach with additional capacities while bringing video content in high and ultra high definition formats. The space code that was manufactured by a very competent team at Thales Alenia Space in Cannes and Toulouse is a very good example of a Condosat, where two payloads for two different customers share the same bus. The success of this project is a result of strong commitment by teams of people, not just within Helasat and Arabsat. On behalf of Helasat and Arabsat, our sincere thanks to Thales Alenia Space for an excellent job done in the manufacturing and delivery of the satellite to Ariane Space for an impressively fast preparation for launch and finally to Imarsat for great collaboration and partnership in this Condosat project over the past three and a half years. We are extremely happy with the very fast integration cycle that allow us to be ready to launch in such a fast turnaround. All the work was just done in less than seven months. We are coming up on confirmation from the DDO on separation of our upper passenger due in just about 10 seconds. Always a high yes. moment of high concentration here. The teams have gone through these procedures before, but it does call for tremendous focus. All eyes are on their computer screen. Separation Elasat 3, Inmarsat S, EAN. Are. First good news of the evening, successful separation of our first passenger, and you can see her leaving the mothership. Helisat 3 and Marsat S-E-A-N, right on time, separated off of the coast of Africa. You may notice that the people here in Jupiter are politely holding their applause because the mission is not over. We still have to separate our final passenger, GSAT 17. But the handshakes have occurred, and there'll be more of those at the end of the mission. The separation mode, you might have seen, longitudinal spin, 
minus 1.5 degrees per second, the composite is spun counterclockwise. Now that Helisat in Marsat is up, some of its early maneuvers, telemetry acquisition in 11 minutes from its Minjinu station, Australia. Initial sun acquisition two hours after that. Partial solar array deployment one hour after that. There will be three apogee burns, we are told, on the third, sixth, La manoeuvre orbits. poursuit du Silda se déroule nominalement. The uh, satellite will reach its position on day five, and day six will see full solar array deployment, as well as the beginning of on-orbit testing, and all that handled by the new station in Nimea, in Greece. And Marsat opened the station in the Peloponnese two years ago as part of its European aviation network. Coming up on separation of the SILDA, this, remember, is the structure that lets us carry a second passenger. We've used the SILDA or an separation du system de lancement double Ariane 5. Times, times, so you can see there's its separation of like bell shaped structure revealing GSAT to the elements. Total weight for the two passengers today 9.2 tons, both have 15 year lifespans. The two passengers today are the 190th and 191st to be launched on an Ariane 5, and the 423rd and 24th to be launched on an Ariane vehicle, because remember, before Ariane 5, there was Ariane 1, 2, 3, and 4. Helisat Inmarsat is the 149th satellite built by Thalassolania Space to be launched by Ariane Space, and there's seven more Thalassolania satellites in the Ariane backlog waiting to be launched. You may have heard that Europe is developing its successor to Ariane 5, very big news. The decision taken by ESA in 2014, develop Ariane 6, more market-driven vehicle to meet customer needs and market changes, including electrical propulsion. It'll apparently be half the cost of Ariane 5 per kilo in two versions, two or four boosters, one institutional and one commercial. Now that the satellite is up, let's hear a bit more about its first maneuvers. We'll be back with more in a moment. Following a successful injection into a geostationary transfer orbit, Thales Alenia Space will assume control of the satellite from its control center in Cannes. With support from Imarsat and Helasat engineering teams, Thales Alenia Space will conduct a series of health check and subsystem initializations and activations to complete a set of apogee maneuvers and bring the satellite to its first geostationary position within five days. Once there, the solar rays will be fully deployed, followed by the deployment of all reflectors. With completion of the first set of in-orbit tests commanded by ground station in Nemea, Greece, the satellite will drift its final position at 39 degrees east, complete all remaining tests, and begin its operational life. Separation of GSAT in about seven minutes from now. The upper stage is coasting now. We're out of our propulsion phases. It has a dual role. Propulsion came first. Now this ballistics role with extinction of the upper stage. Her propulsion part is over, and she's carrying out the second role. We are coasting. And the composite is being spun counterclockwise in a series of operations. You can see some of that on the screen. These maneuvers range in time from a few seconds to a few minutes. And uh, all this why? Well, we have to separate the first satellite in one direction and one altitude. Helisat and Marsat was separated at 1,200 kilometers. Then we separate the SILDA, which you just saw, in a second direction and another altitude higher, 1,500 kilometers. Finally, GSAT has to go in a third direction at altitude, and she is separated at 36,000, no, 3,600 kilometers up. All this also to avoid risk of collision. Space ballet, they call it. The attitude and control system uses small thrusters to perform these maneuvers. You might be able to see them pop on and off on the screen. We have a moment. We want to turn to the quiz question, see if anybody from our two passengers organizations can get this one. Quiz question number 238. Listen up. This is not the first time ISRO and Inmarsat have flown together on an Ariane space flight. So our question is, before tonight, when did they share a launch? Get back to you with the answer in a moment. In our next film, we take a look at the relationship between Ariane space and ISRO.
With GSAT-17, more than 20 Israel-built satellites will have been launched by Ariane, and we are very proud of this uh, continuous uh, cooperation. GSAT-17 spacecraft is a multi-band communication spacecraft with payloads operating in normal sea, upper extended sea, and lower extended sea bands. It also has a mobile satellite service transponder operating in S-band. Additionally, the satellite also carries payloads for data relay as well as search and rescue services. For the first time, MSS payload is designed with a digital filter which provides reconfigurability in frequency spectrum and sharp cutoff uh, filtering which will significantly help in operations. GSAT-17 is the heaviest spacecraft built by ISRO and is designed for a lifetime of 15 years. The spacecraft generates about 6 kilowatts of power and weighs around 3,475 kg at liftoff. The launch campaign at Guyana Space Center has been very smooth with a very professional approach from ISRO, Arian Space and Canis teams. The teams also shared a very cordial relationship and had interesting cultural exchanges too. Remember, our mass at liftoff was 774 tons. What's left of that, do you think? Take a quick look. The vehicle lost 240 tons of fuel in each booster she burned up. That was two minutes after liftoff. Then came the first stage. She used up all the 175 tons of propellant in that, plus another 14 tons of dry mass that was the lower stage. That was also shed. Then we separated our first passenger, five and a half tons then the sill to half a ton. So what's left of 774 tons? Count it. The upper stage, 19 tons. The vehicle equipment bay, that's the white band in the composite, one ton. GSAT weighs three and a half tons, 3.4. Some adapters, a couple hundred kilos, so roughly 25 tons. Remember, nine tons placed on orbit, down from 774 tons. Most of her weight, you realize, is propellant. Another place on the space base where people are very busy tonight, the CVI, the Quick Look Telemetry Display Control Center. These teams have all the means for receiving, processing, storing, and analyzing all the data coming in from the ground stations along Ariane's flight path. Remember, we talked about the downrange stations. Now, right now, these teams are following and analyzing all the key flight data coming in, and they're reporting the flight status of the vehicle back here to us in Jupiter. This is why Jupiter is called the nerve center of the space base. Later on, these data will be treated to reconstitute the entire mission. The flight will be recreated in figures from liftoff to well after satellite separation and analyzed again. We are still in what they call the coasting phase, also called the free flying phase. On the animation, you're over the, the uh, continent of India, and uh, when we get back to the map, you can she's fl flown over the Hassan Station, which is on the coast. We had another look at it. But for now, our final film, giving a rundown of GSAT's first maneuvers after its separation. Soon after separation, GSAT-17 spacecraft will be tracked by Master Control Facility Hassan Ground Station. The Ariane launcher will place the spacecraft into elliptical geo-transfer orbit of about 36,000 kilometers by 250 kilometers. The spacecraft will be put into circular geosynchronous orbit of about 36,000 kilometers by firing its own apogee boost motor three times around 26 hours, 56 hours, and 78 hours after separation. Subsequently, solar panels and reflectors will be deployed and three-axis stabilization of spacecraft will be achieved using momentum wheels. Afterwards, station keeping maneuvers will be carried out to park the spacecraft in its designated orbit of 93.5 degree east. Detailed in-orbit testing of payload will be carried out before declaring the spacecraft operational. Less than a minute until separation of GSAT at 3901. Separation, of course, marks an end as well as a beginning. It's an end to the launcher's mission, but the start of a lot of work for the ground crews around the world who will monitor and track the satellite, test it, Les manœuvres d'orientation pour que les GSA-17 sont terminées. So those teams getting ready to take over, while here, a moment of high concentration as the teams await confirmation of separation of our second passenger. The mood here in Jupiter, I would say, very focused. 
Séparation GSA 17. So, the final good news, and you heard the applause from the people here in Jupiter as Ariane 5 has delivered her second passenger, GSAT-17, out over the Indian Ocean. And you saw the separation, different from the first passenger, GSAT-17, separated by a three-axis stabilized mode. So, from the tense minutes just moments ago, you can see the change here in Jupiter, handshake, smiles, very buoyant all across the space center. And equally, at all the points and posts where people are following the launcher and the satellite, work is just beginning, or soon will be, at the different ground stations for both Helisat and Narsat and for GSAT, and at other sites around the world. Meanwhile, back in Jupiter, we are waiting for the traditional post-separation speeches, podium being set up for our speakers, who will include...